Anyway, before we get into you know more jazz and stuff, um, I would like to if you could talk a bit about when you recorded the first D'Angelo album, right? Sure, sure. That is a good topic which no one ever talks about, and there's not much information about it anyway. So you do it there, and you did it. It's a really important thing that I had no idea. So you got to remember, I'm, I make I signed with Warner Brothers in 1990. Um, uh, I played. You know, by by the summer, by the by the end of 1992, I had played um, you know, the video of me playing with George Benson and Quincy Jones, and Quincy Jones and the Count Basie Big Band at Montreux. This jazz, it. all these things, right? Uh, um, but I had no uh, interest, nor did I think I had any potential really to get involved in popular music. Certainly not yet. Like I'm just. Like I'm, I'm just playing jazz. I'm, I'm you know, I, I got a record deal. I'm feeding my family. You know what? I'm happy. Uh, uh, and you know, I grew up on Long Island um, in a town that was my town was Irish and Italian and German, and there were a few black people. What was the name of the town? What was the name? Of the you know, the town was called Lindenhurst. Lindenhurst, Lindenhurst, New York. And it was it was in uh, uh, the, it was a small town in a large in a large area called Babylon, right? And and so, I there was a there was a kid. In fact, he was my arch enemy uh, in the orchestra. It, you know, his name was Joseph D'Angelo. He was Italian and he played bass. He was a big kid, and he we were, on, we were on the lacrosse team together. He was always bigger than me and better than me. You know, and he was, I hated that kid. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> Joseph D'Angelo. So when when I got a call to play on this, uh, you know, my band we were, we were doing a concert, a jazz concert out at Queens College, and I got a call to, to from you know from my manager said, hey. Well, because I wasn't living in New York at that time, I was living in New Orleans. And he says, while you're in New York, when you leave Queens College, you, you got to go by, stop by this recording studio on the west side. Uh, you've been hired to play on a, on a record by, for some guy named D'Angelo. Now, no one had heard of D'Angelo yet, so my first thought is, oh God, another Italian kid from Long Island named D'Angelo. Like, oh God, they can't get away from this dude. What if it's the same guy? You know, like, I hate that dude, right? <laughs> Right, and so uh, so I'm figuring he's like a jazz piano player. Some kid plays sax. I have no idea who this guy is, and all I've got with me is that that Ibanez guitar, like uh, a small you know little amplifier, and that's I got no pedals, nothing, right? So I walk into the studio and I see Hargrove sitting on the couch talking to this dude, and we're always like, oh shit, what's up, man? Yo, this is D'Angelo, and I'm like, that's oh. <laughs> Great! <laughs> I was like, man, you don't know how happy I am to see you and not that guy I grew up with. Like, beautiful, you know. All right. So then I'm thinking, well, 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 well what kind of, you know, when I hear this music in the background, it sounds like church, right? It just sounds like singers and organ and shit. I was just like, man, this is killing. What's this? I said, I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm glad they didn't hire me to play on that. It's killing, but I don't, I don't, I'm not really that good at that. And <laughs> and then Bob Power comes out and says, hey, man, glad you're here coming in the control room, and I was like, oh God, that's it, right? And so I'm sitting down there playing, and, and, and he's playing the tracks for me. I had a lot of things in my feet. So one, um, it was it was early on in the development of Pro Tools, like very early. And Bob Power, great producer, wonderful engineer, even a really good guitar player. Uh, uh, you know, P Pro Tools at that time was literally two floor to ceiling units of rack equipment that he couldn't get to work right. It was all, it was always a mess. So he had all of these tracks and things that hadn't been quantized yet and whatever uh, uh, put together. And it took them a long time to get it organized. So I had time to kind of practice over the track while I was playing over and over again and kind of figure out some stuff to play. Um, oh, in this case, was it like on using, the they using two inch tape. an NPC or? They were using two inch tape. Uh, um, Ali Shaheed Muhammad had been there, and there was some stuff programmed in the MPC. Um, well, maybe, not an not MPC, it may be an 808. So I think it's before MPCs, right? It's probably eight. Uh, probably. That's the one. That's, that's a good this, question. This, this, was 1990, like, this is 1992, 93. Probably. So, probably. Yeah, so I think it was an 808 or some, some other drum, the Lind drum. I think, I think the, the MPC had been around already by then. Okay, I, 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 yeah, I wouldn't know. Uh, there's like the West Coast hip hop was already using. Maybe you're them. right. Maybe you're right. But whatever, whatever it was, it was pretty. It was pretty early on. And so uh, uh, they had beats programmed, and then D'Angelo played. A, he's a great uh, keyboard bass player. 
right? And so there's one story actually, because Will Lee plays bass on the last track of of, uh, of Brown Sugar, um, uh, whatever it's called, I can't remember the name, I can't remember the name of the song, but. but anyway, um, the way the way it happened was, D'Angelo played it first, and then Bob Power transcribed it and sent it to Will Lee and said, I want you to come play this. And Will was like, oh, if it's keyboard bass, how hard can it be? He didn't look at it. And so the day, like when, when the session came up that day, Will just didn't show up. Oh. And and Bob was like, man, that's not like Will Lee. And so he called him, he's like, man, I, he's like, man, I, I decided to look at that shit last night. It was too hard, I couldn't play it. He's like, I need another week to practice it. So the great Will Lee, it took him like a whole week to, to learn how to play the bass lines that D'Angelo had already recorded. And he came in a week later, oh, higher, take me higher. That's the name of the song. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so that's Will Lee playing on that. And, and um, so anyway, like that's, you know, the minute D'Angelo came in, he's like, man, I just played da, 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 I was like, oh, okay, you already know what you want, Will. But cool, you know, it's so like, and I had other parts. And also because, because they couldn't get Pro Tools to work, I couldn't just play a part once and, they, and have them loop it. I had to play, over and over for well, seven. That's, that's actually one of uh, D'Angelo's little, you know, what call them, um, specificities. Is uh, yeah. he likes to record like, even if it's a back vocal, you'll do what that back vocal from the beginning to the end. He won't like. Oh God! You know I mean? saw. And you so look I, at just imagine all the vocals he has. That guy has so many vocals. Man. Oh God! Well, yeah. I mean, but I get it. Right, like, like Marvin Gaye, right? That's how Marvin Gaye did it. Sure, sure. And so I, you know, I, I stole on that song "Smooth." I'm literally playing "Boom, Boom, 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 Boom." I must have played that for like three hours until I got the whole <laughs> thing right. You know, one, but, one, um, the other one I, you play on, which you I play on "Smooth." Yeah, and the one that you start off with the guitar solo. The one that's smooth. Play. That's smooth. Yeah, man, that's yeah. that's cool. And, and then I played, I played, I played the parts on those "Dreaming Eyes of Mine." But yeah. the sound wasn't right, and so Bob Power replayed. He replayed that solo. So on the record, that's Bob playing. It's not me. Okay. okay. Cool. Um, but that, but that, that particular recording, man. How many days were you there anyway? I was. I was there one day. I was okay. there for six yeah. hours. Yeah. Well, that was you know well done for. Dude, oh, that was. <laughs> people take that, out days just to months just to record. Right. That changed my whole life that day. Yeah, because then you got into. So, so anyway, I consider you a soul player anyway. I mean, sure, but but there was a, there's a difference between jazz, soul, you know, exactly. you have that heart in it anyway. Well, but you know, you have to remember, I, I, you know, I, I'm Catholic, right? My family, we went to a Catholic church. So as a kid, I, you know, I, I, so I didn't have, I didn't, don't have that, you know, that American black soul church experience in my childhood. I have none of that. And so where all of these guys who come from that experience, bring that, bring that, bring that energy into the way they play R&B music, the way they play jazz and all that. I didn't have that. So I I had to come, to, I had to, to get to it from another way. Oh, I got you it. It. Yeah, you got it from uh, Jack McDuff, man. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, I, so I, you know, I had, so, but, but hearing, the, hearing them play that day and, and hearing the music and then seeing what was starting to come up from that, uh, that that that's that ignited the fire for me. You have to remember, we did that recording session in '92. It was two years before the record came out. And then when the record came out, the first single was Brown Sugar, and they released it in the South, and it bombed. Okay. Because in America, people weren't listening to, to music that slow. The new the soul, radio, room, right? That's yeah, that, yeah, that slow, that mid tempo shit. That so they put Brown Sugar out. It didn't do well, and then they, the follow up single was Me Those Dreaming Eyes. I, I mean, uh, um. You're my lady. Yeah, and that's that's the one that caught on a little faster. And it's the one that caught on, then Brown Sugar came back out, and then he was then he was gone from there. Oh,